Nobody does history as accurately as we are. Let's get everybody into the gray zone. Follow ideas, politics, don't revere people. What's up? I'm Chris DiStefano, a.k.a. Chrissy D, a.k.a. King Gay. You're listening to the Bay Ridge Boys, History Hyenas. <laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of the History Hyenas. I'm Chris Stefano, a.k.a. Lieutenant Lollipop. I am Giannis Pappas, a.k.a. Sergeant Snuggy. Let me just say this. Venetia just looked at you to turn your phone off. Was you, that my phone? Yeah, you have your, always have Wait, your phone have, on, okay. Cuz, because you're 100 years old. All right, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted a full, quick Catholic blast of anger from you. No, okay, turn off your phone, you <laughs> It's not real. What happened to those quick bursts of anger? Because they're slowly going. Here's what's been happening to me. Those are slowly going down. You got corona. That's why you got your mask on. I got on. the mask because, make no mistake, I had back-to-back vacations in Lake George and Montauk, and I have the mask on for those reasons, one. But also, two, we're talking about Thomas Sowell and the black conservative movement today. So I want to do this episode in black mask <laughs> just to... <laughs> Just to be in solidarity with yeah. my brothers and sisters in Antifa. Because when you're wearing the same mask <laughs> as Vena Antifa, it's you're ready to torch some shit. Yeah, I mean, you guys just look like you came out of different exits at a mosque. Yeah, it's what it is. My mask, sa- my mask says I'm torching federal buildings. My jersey says I'm torching tikis. You guys look like two Muslims who haven't quite figured out how to put the burqa on right. Yeah, it's what it is. I'm a reform muzzy. Where- because I'm wearing a white face piece because we are here... Like Benetton as a company, marketing peace and love between white and black conservatives. Absolutely, because this episode is not going to be for the faint of heart. Yes, we are two white pieces of shit talking about the black conservative movement and Thomas Sowell, because the truth is this, is Yanni and I like to read. We read Thomas Sowell, a great recommendation of a book by Yanni uh, was Thomas Sowell's Conquest and Culture, and we read it cover to cover. Yanni had read it, and we read a lot of these things about black conservatives, and as two white guys... If we kind of agree with them, then we are pretty much in the clan to most people. Well, here's the deal. We are Which is wild. Yeah, if you re- yeah, if you re- say anything about Thomas Sowell, you're a white supremacist even though he's a black conservative. We're going to talk about the history of black conservatives and that I got to mo- take the mask off cuz I'm I can't breathe. If you take the mask off, we're all going to get corona. Yeah, let me just put it on. Let me just put it on our guy. No, why don't you put it on where it really needs to be put on where all the diseases are? Put it on your dick. Because your dick should be wearing a mask at all times. Because my dick is fine, actually. I did go to the ER and get my dick checked. (laughs) Because here's the deal. I think we're always safe when we talk about any black historical topic. Because A, I did a sketch with Donnell Rawlings. Yes. And B... You dress like you shop at Models. Yeah. So I we're both like a, black teenagers. Yeah, I got this out of the back of an Amazon truck. Cuz, Venetia so, is going to have a fucking heart attack by the end of this episode. It's what it is, cuz. It's what it is. Yeah, and I also have a Puerto Rican child. So any white piece of shit that wants to say anything for me, I advise you to do what I've done and step into the storm, baby. Yeah. I've stepped into the storm, and I've... I've, I've, I've that's how fucking anti-racist I am, is I've literally... I've literally said, I'm going to tie myself to another race for the rest of my life. What have you done, fucking Portland Antifa? <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, because if anyone wants to step into your Thunderdurm, you still got a slow snap and right that was taught to you by Hezar Sazar Chavez. Yeah, it's just what it is, because... Yeah, what's his name again? What's our friend's name again? Oh, Sergio Chico. Make no mistake, make no mistake, I am in a thunderstorm with thunder thighs jerking off to thunder from down under. <laughs> <laughs> now, because it's just what it is, because of uh, Chrissy Thunderstorms. We just want to say first and foremost, guys, go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys to watch WEPA in the morning. Every day we give you the daily news uh, in our way, the only way the hyenas do it. So go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys, sign up. 
Uh, for the lowest tier, you'll get to he- yeah. you get to hear the episode. We're at, yeah, we're actually two comedians doing a daily show talking about American politics that are actually from America. What do you fucking have? How about them apples? How about we're them- two Americans talking about what's going on in America? Okay, not like Trevor Noah and John Oliver. I don't care how fucking smart you are. Okay, why don't you? I don't. You say one more word about America. Guess what you're gonna get? A fucking snap in two with the foot turned over, and then a left when my rib gets better. Cause make no mistake, I'm in a domestic dispute. Way Jong <laughs> Venetia is just Venetia. Cackle, 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 cackle. You know what you, you, you look like this whole episode? You look like that Edward Monk photo of just that. What is that? That worry guy? You're just you're holding your face, going no. Yeah, it's gonna happen for about sixty minutes consistently because we're two white guys diving deep into the history of the black conservative. Yeah, movement. and I'm fucking excited to do this. Make no mistake, Thomas Sowell. The kid was born in North Carolina, but he was raised in Harlem. He's like a reverse Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was born in Brooklyn, but raised in North Carolina. But they're both doing great. Great. They both uh, have done great things for the black uh, community. Uh, my favorite Michael Jordan quote is, Republicans buy sneakers too. <laughs> <laughs> and by Republicans, uh, at least one of those Republicans he was talking about was Tommy Sowell. Is it Thomas Sowell or, Tom, or, or Tommy Sowell? Because I it's I think it's tomato, tomato, to be honest with you. I call him Tommy Sowell food. Yeah, I don't know what you say, but listen, the kid, the kid is a very prominent... Uh, black conservative. And what does that mean? That means he's revered by the entire conservative party. Right. White, black, uh, Asian, trans, whoever. I mean, you know, we ha- we do have one famous trans Republican. Caitlyn is a Republican. Caitlyn J- Katie Caitlyn J Jenner is a Republican? Is a fucking Republican, cuz. Wow. Did you not know that? Venetia did not know that. She also didn't know that... <laughs> That will cut that part out. Yeah, we'll cut that part out. That's what you could do for a comic cause. <laughs> cause, make no mistake, Thomas Sowell is fascinating. If do yourself a favor and read the book Conquest and Culture. It is not for the faint of heart, but it's one of those things where he says a lot of things and kind of backs it up with a lot of literature. Uh, and facts of things that he discovered, but he is unfortunately called an Uncle Tom by other members of the black community because that's just the way the cookie crumbles, Bubba's. Yeah, and what we were talking about before is we got interested in this because when you go up, I grew up Greek, you grew up white trash. Yeah. So we knew, um, yep. you know, Queen's trash. Absolutely. So in the Greek community, when you go, you go through the church, and in the church, there was always, I was an altar boy in the church, there was, there was Greek conservatives, Greek liberals, Greek Democrats, Greek Republicans, and they all hung out with each other. My mom, she's basically a socialist, human rights socialist. My dad was a Republican, but then when you asked him what he believed in, he was like, whatever's good for my business. Yeah. So it's like, I, it's very strange. You don't see that in the black community. You don't really see the diversity of thought. Or, moreover, you don't see the acceptance right. of, of people who are conservative or Republican in the black community. The term Uncle Tom, as defined by Google, is a black man considered to be excessively obedient or servile to white people, a person regarded as betraying their culture or social allegiance. He called moderates Uncle Toms. There you go. And that comes from the uh, American classic novel by Harriet Beecher Stowe, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Which, uh, which I did gave it a good... It's another good read. Right. It's another good read about the history of this country. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I gave I'm it a good read. read. I also read Calvin and Hobbes. You almost said Uncle Tom's Kavanaugh is what I you did, said. I almost <laughs> did say Uncle Tom's Kavanaugh. Yeah. Which is 10. Which is a 10, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just what it is, cuz. Yeah. Cuz so, I... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, what were we going to no, say? I, I just... Yeah, I've, I'm just having slight chest pain that's coming back. Cuz, with the emergency room is close by now, with friendly faces, your godfather is in the borough. Yeah. So, make sure... I, I Make no mistake... I'd love to talk to Lukash about how often you fucking light up his DMs. Yeah, cuz. It must be a daily occurrence going, yeah. cuz, I got a swight, I got a slight twinge in my neck. What is it? And he just goes, it's not a mucho. It's not a mucho. Cuz, yeah, between him and strippers, their DMs get lit up by lit Chrissy Day. Lit fuck yeah, I mean, cause, up, cuz. Yeah, if for every stripper I DM, you could see it. You could expect a text from Uncle Lukey. Cuz, and we can always tell what's going on in your home, love. Like, I think me... You can tell by when I when I am or am not in the hospital. And we can tell, and we can tell by that. And we can also tell by what you say on the podcast. What's going on in your home life? Whatever you start calling things situations or to, referring to strippers uh, DMs, 
you're either fucking in a state of uh, a little bit, you're a little bit freer, or you're about to go home and get hit. It's just <laughs> what it is, cuz. I'm Chrissy Chaos. I've learned to accept it and just try to thrive in it as best I can, cuz to make it, no mistake, the train is inevitably going off the track. Yeah, and we met and we had a meeting with the producers and we said, you know what, cuz you're the Dennis Rodman of this podcast. Yes. Whatever is going, we just gotta go with the flow, babe. If you fucking show, if you come in where, naked, we play. We do the podcast. Whatever you do, we we, do the, we don't ask questions. We don't judge. If you come in with a guy and you say, this is my husband, we go, that's his husband today, guy. It's just we what just it is. roll with I the mean, punches. Because the same way Dennis Rodman was able to fix relations between North Korea and the U.S. by going to see Kim Jong-un, I'm going to go visit President Xi Jinping Pong in China, and we're gonna, I'm going to fucking smooth that over with us. Yeah, my, because if you walked... I mean, what's the kid's name? If you came in riding a horse and parked it outside, yeah. and you showed up with a man and said, this is my husband, but only for today... I would just say, okay, yeah. and say, can we get the notes for the podcast? I would accept it and just go on and, and expect that tomorrow would be a totally different reality, and I would go with that one, too. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. I just fucking go with the flizzle. Can we get the notes back up? I want to read something about Tommy Sowell. Well, let's back up before we go to Tommy Sowell. Let's talk about the origins, cuz, of the black conservative movement, which most people credit having its origins in sort of the... I guess intellectual feud, intellectual feud is a good way to put it, between two prominent black intellectuals from the past at the turn of the last century, W.E. Du Bois, yeah. who was surprisingly not a French kid, he was and a black kid. Booker T. Washington, Book the wrestler. Yeah, the wrestler Booker T. Washington, yeah. exactly. It's what it is. So it so, was a match officiated by Jim McMahon, and it went a little something like what? Yeah, it went a little something like what? So Booker T. Washington came out of the gate and said, listen, Bubba's. First of all, Booker T. Washington, they both lived in like the late 1800s, early 1900s. Well, Booker was born in, 18, in the 1850s, a slave, where W.E. Du Bois was born a free kid. So that, I think, is a key difference when we're looking back in history. But basically, Booker T. was saying, hey, Let's just get the way we get out of this, all this bullshit with the racism is just to put our heads down and work, and it's a long term plan. Where W. Du Bois, I just call him Why you, <laughs> well, you, you learned how to say it correctly. Yeah, W. Du Bois, w. Webb Du Bois. Yeah. Webb Du Bois said, no, I want my freedom and I want it now. So yeah. he was more, one was short term, one was long term. Who do you side with? Well, yeah, I Be mean, careful. Here, yeah, exactly. Here's the thing. <laughs> W.E. Du Bois was born in Massachusetts, so he was a Boston Red Sox fan. Yeah, that's the thing. So he came out and said, listen, I want to get my car now, you cocksucker. Yeah, I mean, when he gave his fucking speech, he was like, fucking listen, we need to be fucking free, and I don't fucking care. Yeah. I don't fucking care. I'm yeah. watching the fighter, and I'm fucking, I'm, I'm voting for Mickey yeah. Ward. And the kid fucking W.E. Du Bois had a handlebar mustache, because if you got a handlebar mustache and you don't start cutting my hair immediately, I don't know what you're doing. Because the... The kid fucking ate a lot of popcorn and watched the movie did the pot. Cause you better give me cut my hand, give me a sarsaparilla. You got a handlebar mustache. Cause my mom dated a guy with a has to with a handlebar mustache and make no mistake, it was brutes. <laughs> I mean, the kid's handlebar mustache was brutes. Cause D Webb the boy was from Fall River. Fall River. He was from fucking Fall River. Fall River is a fucking badass place. But W. Du Bois. So he said he was from Fall River, Massachusetts, where Booker T. He was Washington. not from Fall River, Massachusetts, but we were having fun. Oh, having fun? Yeah. He was from Massachusetts, oh. but not Fall River. Well, let's just say he's from Fall River. Why the fuck not? Why he's the, a kid from Massachusetts from Fall River. W. Du Bois was born and raised in the Saudi projects in Boston. <laughs> Why the fuck not, guys? Why the fuck not? So he... He's Matt Damon. He's Matt Damon. So basically, um, and, and then, and then uh, Booker T. Washington was born a slave, actually, in the South. Yeah. And then he, he, you know, they, he broke free. So yeah, so W. E. Du Bois was born free in Massachusetts, and... Uh, uh, self, it, it, you know, the way he described this, he didn't face much racism until he went to Fisk College, which where was that exactly in the South? Carlton Fisk University. Carlton Fisk University, who he went to a... He Where's went to Fisk a, University? A black college in the South. My guess is going to be, it's either going to be Atlanta, Georgia, or my next guess is going to be Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm going with North Carolina. Let's what see is, where, where it is. Fisk University? The answer is Nashville, Tennessee. Hello, Nate Bargatze. Yeah, hello. Yeah, so yeah. it was in Nashville, Tennessee, and when he went to Fisk in Nashville, which is a black university, this was during the uh, segregated South era, so this is the first time he experienced segregation. This had a big impact on him. On on Booker T. Oh uh, no, on W. E. D. Du Bois. Oh, I'm sorry, Du Bois. He went south to go to Fisk, and uh, after living in Massachusetts, which there wasn't a lot of uh, the type of racism he saw down. I mean, it wasn't a fucking utopia up there where everyone ignored race, but it's a lot different than going to the South, which is like where they looked at you as a um, property it's and not a human being. Segregation at segregation. that point. Segregation. I mean, it's fucking. 
total segregation. So this really influenced him big time. And this kind of, you, you could probably say that this probably is what turned him into the radical that he was going, fuck this. We need to handle the issues with the black community and equality for the black community through politics. We got to change these laws. We got to pressure these politicians. We need radical action now. Whereas Booker T. Washington was like, yo, let's do this through the economy. Let's fucking right. learn trades. He founded the Tuskegee Institute and said, let's learn. Let's, let's, start, let's start winning economically. So like, to, you know, because I know sometimes you get heavy on the history, but to just make it so you can understand, I would assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, Booker T. Washington would be more like a Thomas Sowell or Ben Carson now where, you know, pr two prominent blacks, where a W. Du Bois would be more like a Sean King. That's what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, yeah, sort of. Like prominent I, black. I mean, fucking V's head's going to explode. Yeah, I'm just... Kind of, yes. would be like Short King and Andrew Schultz. Like that's just kind of just be. on different sides of the uh, Michael Rappaport. It would, yeah. They kind of that's the thing is they see like Booker T. They you can almost see the roots of the Black Conservative movement more in Booker T. And you can see sort of the more of the liberal movement in W. E. Du Bois. But make no mistake, Booker T. Booker T. Washington and W. E. Du Bois were, were fucking intercontinental. They're, champions. The intercontinental. They were tag team champs, but but mo they both wanted civil rights. It wasn't like one was. They both wanted the same thing. It's just one wanted a long term planning to get out of it by through the economy where the other one D D w dubois wanted it right now wanted the freedom right now so it's it's tough to say which one i think they're both it's just different methods to try to get to the same thing kind of, yeah they both were into the advancement of black people and they're both kind of like the pillars they're the foundation of sort of uh equality movement for blacks i mean yeah. this is the one had booker t washington had his way of going about it. he's a former slave he he he, he was into a, you know individual hard work learning your trade you know uh booker t, you mean, not not w dubois oh i said which one did i you say? just said w dubois but you meant booker t booker t yeah booker t was into let let's do it let's do this economically self-reliant all these conservative values you know we'll open our own businesses we'll we'll prove our worth to white America through our economic prowess and our achievement, whereas W.E. Du Bois, after going to Fisk uh, University, was like, we need that we can't do that unless we get political equality. This we got to end segregation. Equality. Right. We need rights. We need this. Um, so, which I'm all for the ending the segregation. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I I, I agree with W.E. Du Bois on that. Was W.E. Du Bois was he the one who was influential on affirmative action? The, the, the affirmative action came later. No, later, but I'm saying it was it was more of W. Du Bois' yes. line of thinking for Radical. affirmative action. Yes. Which I, the, the only thing I have with, the problem I have with affirmative action is that it's just, it then it, it you kind of are like making then black people feel like they're only qualified for something because of this affirmative action where they've been qualified the whole time. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like, if I say, hey, you got this job because we need three black guys, it's like, why? You're then it's already making me feel like I'm an outcast when I didn't feel that way to begin with. I think It I, kind of makes it feel like it's like you're already putting in their head that you're an outcast and we have to do this one. Why is that a thing? We're, if you really want equality, then we all go for the same jobs. Right. I mean, I think... Tom, I'm a white piece of shit, but I, I feel safe I could say that because I'm in a baseball jersey and I got my Jordan 1s on. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm safe. You just look like you just walked out of a Models and you forgot your hat with the stickers on it. Yeah, it's just what it is. I told you I got a fucking <laughs> cop haircut and a liberal brain. It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you. The, the, the interesting thing is, you see this kind of, you see these two sides of the coin uh, of the black struggle, kind of throughout his American history. I will say, I will say one thing about you is, even though you have one eye, you always do see two sides. I do. I see two sides with my one eye. With your one eye, you I'm see a, two sides. I'm a one-eyed kid who sees <laughs> both sides. Yeah, yeah. So you see these two sides of the coin of the black struggle uh, come up through prominent members of the black community spokespeople for the black community, leaders of black community throughout history. Because then again, you kind of see it a little bit in Martin Luther King and, and Malcolm X. Martin Luther King, you know, definitely both of those, uh, uh, both of those guys had the same motives, just like W.E. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington. They both right. wanted civil rights and equality. Uh, Martin Luther King wanted to do it a little bit more conservatively, peaceful protest. Right. You know, he met with the presidents. Uh, he met uh, with 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 um, Johnson. 
Um, the same way Booker T. Washington met with Teddy Roosevelt. Um, peaceful protest, civil disobedience, right. let them do it, we'll work slowly. And Malcolm X was like, he, he wanted to do it public enemy style. Yeah. He put on it, he started listening to uh, Boogie Down Productions, and he was like, let's get the gats out, yeah. and let's fucking, let's get radical. Yeah, he by, wanted to do it like Venetia would do it. He wanted to do it, by, his famous quote, by all means necessary. Right. The, so it was a bit, little bit of the ends justify the means. Uh, the means justify the ends. What am I trying to say? There's no, what, the ends justify the means. But this problem is, is like there's no real right or wrong answer here. It's like no. just what's going to get the results, and only history is going to tell us what basically got the results. We, we're kind of just in the middle of it right now, and I hope you can get to a place, at least in my daughter's lifetime, where these problems don't exist anymore. Right, because she's in between black and red. She's Puerto Rican. She does, yeah. So she's in she's New actually York, the perfect be, advocate. Yeah, in New York, you had white, Puerto Rican, and black, and that was it. That's it, and yeah. So and um, so, let's just let me just do a quick little fun facts about Thomas Howell before we get into his heavy thinking. First, he was born in Gastonia, North Carolina. Gastonia sounds like a place I'm from because I blow a lot of farts. Yeah. So um, uh, his father died. He was raised by a single mother, um, which is why he's probably so prominent because he was raised by Wait, only should we take, the matriarchy. Yeah. Should we take a second of silence to respect that fucking queen? No, respect that queen, and also like the patriarchy died in his house very early on, which is a good thing for all children. So that's why he was such a fucking. Powerhouse yeah, because, in history. Because he was raised by mom. So he was raised in North Carolina, but when he was nine years old, he came to Harlem, right? And he actually had never even met a white person. Uh, he thought that blonde hair, he could, when he first time he came to New York and he saw someone with blonde hair, he didn't know what it was. He didn't even know it was a hair color. He had no idea because mostly in Gastonia, North Carolina, it was, it was mostly within the black community. He went to Stuyvesant High School, which is a prominent New York City high school, um, excelled there, and then he was forced to drop out at 17 because of financial difficulties uh, and problems in his home. I don't know what that means. We just found out the kid had problems at home. I don't know what happened. His mother maybe got involved with somebody who was disciplining her. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We, d we do know he dropped out of Stuy High School, which, like you said, is very hard yeah. to get into. You got to take a standardized test to get into it. Thomas Sowell was very, very, very brilliant guy. Dropped out, uh, and he was drafted into the Korean War. Or he also tried out for the Brooklyn Dodgers. He did try for the Brooklyn Dodgers. So the kid played baseball. But did did he get drafted or he or joined the the, uh, the he war? Was effort? It says he was drafted in the military yeah. in 1951 during the Korean War. Cause was, was your pops Chris Pappas potentially was Thomas Sowell the guy that tried to cornhole him or do we have the name of the actual soldier who tried to cornhole the great late Chris Pappas? I don't know the name of the guy, but somebody did try to cornhole my dad in the bunk. Yeah, and your he dad said it happened. In, he said it at Fort Benny. And we said Fort Benny. And we said on Weapon in the Morning this morning at patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. We're having so much fun over there. We did say that Giannis's uh, father did push out a frozen shit in the middle of the battlefield that did open up his asshole, which with the scarring on the on the asshole alone got him into the gay part of heaven when he went through. Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> did rip his asshole. And uh, he says it was a frozen turd, but it's remained to be seen because when he did die, we did find it could have been Thomas Gay Art in by the late great Chris Poppins. So the, the story could have been for your mother that, hey, the reason I'm my asshole's ripped over because I had a frozen turd. But the truth is, he could have a little more could happen to Fort Benny. Yeah, he could have hooked up with Thomas Sowell. It's what it is, cuz. And then, yeah, that would make sense because, cuz, you look like a black kid and either your father's Thomas Sowell or David Dinkins. It's one we of the two. We don't know, but it's not Chris Poppins. It's one of the freaking two. Because <laughs> Chris, yeah. So, and, um, and, uh. So he was drafted into the army, went to Korea, dropped out of Stuyvesant, but then he came back, cuz, started at Howard University. Which, which Howard University is like the Harvard of the black colleges, that's what right? They say. That's what they say. That's what they say. It's, it's a black, uh, school in, in DC, black university, just like Fisk. And, uh, but then he transferred to Harvard. The kid went to right, Harvard. Right. Just, yeah, went to Harvard, right, where he wrote his senior honors. V, put your seatbelt on this one. We're going to mention the guy that turns you on. Yeah. Theories of left-wing German political philosopher Karl Marx. <laughs> so Karl Marx. And <laughs> Wei Zhong Zhan. Because that's borderline. Sorry, I'm just kidding. In this era, it was a good joke, but I just sorry, don't we know. We got to delete it. We can edit we it out. Keep, I'm sorry. We got to keep V just I'm just kidding. I was just a joke. I'm sorry about Karl Marx. Marx doesn't know we make fun. She's in Antifa. I'm sorry, but if we got to lose it, we can absolutely it the, lose it. It was the sliding off the seat part, which is Well, what, that's why I said put your seatbelt on. I put your seatbelt on. That's what the joke was. was. It, yeah. so, but I, I, it didn't land, so then I had to. I'm just no, sorry. It, no, my cholesterol is too high for this. You do. You got you to cancel your forward membership. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm canceling my forward membership. But uh, uh, but so so Sowell himself was actually committed Marxist when he left Harvard. Yes. Um, and, he, and he actually, so he was all about being extreme left and the propaganda that Marx, because let's tell the folks, because you did a good job explaining this. What is Marxism, if you could break it down in Yanni terms? Marxism is basically, is basically this. Hey, uh, you making money? Yeah. I'm making money. 
you make a lot more than me. I make less than you. You're faster than me. You're smarter than me. I'm smart. We're going to get paid the same. It's just We're what it is. We're going to be rewarded the same for the betterment of society. Right. I mean, that's basically what it so is. So it is socialism. It's, it's, yeah, Marxism is socialism. Now, you, you have like different, you have communism. You know, basically, you, you can be a socialist without being a communist. You can't be a communist without being a socialist. Got it. So that's what it is. Think about it as like communism is like, let's say, communism is like Mountain Dew. Okay. okay? And so- Kills your sperm. And socialism is like uh, uh, diet Mountain Dew. Okay. So it's just like that. One's a little, one's a little, one's a little going to get you really jacked up to put people in programs and round them up if they disagree with you. And the other ones, you're kind of just going like, hey, man, we just want 35% of your hard work. And that's it. That's what it is. Okay. Because we're not going to fucking beat you down. Got it. So so that's what he believed in the beginning of his life, Thomas Sowell, right after Marxist. college. Yeah, he started out. Because most 20-year-old college kids don't know fucking anything, as we said today on Weapon in the Morning. And that's why they get all crazy and they do shit when it's like, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, yet you're 20 years old. Yeah, I mean, but here's the deal. It's all about don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because Marxism has its merit. I mean, Mar- you know, Adam Smith, everything. We can't just go with these extremes like smack shit out of history and totally revere other things. It's like we got to take bits and pieces because we got to treat history like a farmer's market. You go to a farmer's market, you don't fucking knock carrots off the table because you don't like carrots. Right. You fucking pick and taste. You pick a cabbage and taste it. You pick a carrot and you get a little bit of everything, little corn, little jam, little fucking organic cookies, and you bring the whole basket home. You bring the, You yeah. don't just bring cookies. What's the point to be at a farmer's market if you just leave with fucking cookies? Guys, do you want to go to a farmer's market with I me? I want to go to, a, as Dan Soder would say, farmer's market. Farmer's market. Okay, so. Did you get the analogy? Do you know what I'm saying? We did. We got it. No, Yanni, that's Yanni Breakdowns. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, during the 1960s is when... Uh, Sowell started to kind of change his positions with stuff, and that's when um, he started to become, uh, you know, he, got, he went to Stanford's, uh, Stanford University's Hoover Institute, and when he started to kind of think a little bit outside of Marxism, he started to go to centrist, and then he went a little to the right. Um, I don't think he's actually that far to the right at all, but if you talk to some members of uh, the black community, they think he's like radical right. Right, which well, is wild. So he 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 went to Harvard, and then he went to like the University of Chicago. Right, where did he get his masters and stuff? He's an economist. I thought the kid. I thought he got it from uh, UCLA. No, UCLA. <laughs> well, he ended up teaching at um at at, at, at certain schools at UC. Uh, yeah, uh, he went he went he went to the West Coast to teach, and he ultimately ended up at Stanford at the Hoover Institute. The Hoover Institute is like a. Uh, I mean, Thomas Sowell. If we can post this picture up of Thomas Sowell's Wikipedia, he does look like Giannis in blackface. That's just what it is. Just because he's got glasses on. I mean, anybody who's got glasses on to me looks like you. Yeah, he does. I mean, his. <laughs> so he ended up. Uh, he ended up at the um, Hoover Institute, which is sort of a right leaning. Uh, think tank at Stanford University. And so he's a professor, economist, and yeah, he gradually moved to the right, greatly influenced by the famous um, or infamous, depending on what your political fucking affiliation is, Milton Friedman. Okay. So oh, I Milton, actually don't know who that is. Can we explain he's that? A, he's a little five foot, foot two squeak. Do you think he could be Debo Squeak of the Week? Has Debo been reading up on Milton Friedman? Because the, the chances of Debo ever knowing who Milton Friedman are are zero to point seven. Yeah, it's just it's what it just is. not going to happen. Yeah. So Milton Friedman is the 1976 uh, Nobel Prize winning economist who, um, who, uh, who, who, who advocates the free market. He's okay. all about the free market, baby. All the free market, He's which all Thomas Sowell's of- all about the free market. Exactly. So that was a big influence on Marxism Thomas is not about the free market. No, Marxism is not about the free market. No. Okay. But you know, socialism, we we live in what what is called a a, a mixed economy. Right. A Keynesian mixed economy. Right. Where we have a free market. Like even when the, people shout say Shout out the Kinsey scale. Yeah. But, yeah, shout out the Kinsey. Even when people say, like, look at look at the socialist countries, um, look at Denmark, look at Sweden. Those are not Look, in, look, listen to me, you fucking idiots. They're not socialist countries. 
They they are just like us, just with more socialism, but right. they are free market what countries. What is a socialist communist country is a little country by the name of China, and they are shaving China. the heads and blindfolding Muslims from the Uyghur population, giving them birth control, and putting them on trains and sending them to re-education camps. But as long as you get your iPhone for half price, who gives a fuck you and tea for fucking terrorists? <laughs> yeah. And even, <laughs> even China had to open up some markets because without markets, you just don't get cooking. Yeah, you don't. Because human nature, human nature wants to compete. Yeah. Human nature wants things for themselves. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that Jeff Bezos and Neil deGrasse Tyson and all our great thinkers are doing better than you. But guess what? They work harder, okay? Yeah. They read the books. They've done the work. They weren't out protesting when they were 20 years old. They were in college. Yeah. Okay, you dumb fucks. Yeah, and there's just, there's just one fact that remains that we haven't said, and that's... No matter what, your mom votes to the right. She votes to the right, and I fucking need music. I need entertainment to come back because I need these white Antifa members to get off the street to stop burning them down and just get into a Dave Matthews concert. I need them in a fucking where they're supposed to be in a Dave Matthews concert. Yeah, I mean, basically, the riots are happening in Portland, Seattle, because... Uh, yeah, they can't go see their fucking favorite bands. Yeah. And I, there's no farmer's markets. Yeah, because they canceled the fucking festival that Benetia wants to get married at. What's it called? Fire Fest? No, Fire the Fest? other one. Oh, what's the other one where everyone dresses dirty and worship, oh, um, worships Andrew Schultz? What's what it called? What is it? Uh, Coachella? Coachella. Yes, Coachella. And what, there's another one, right? Burning Man is canceled. Burning so Man. That's basically what those riots are, is that fucking Burning Man and Coachella are canceled. Canceled. We can't do drugs in the desert and fucking just, you know, <sighs> wiggle around. So here's where Thomas Sowell gets a little controversial. Here's one of his beliefs is that poverty among minority groups is less a result of racial and societal discrimination than of a group's values, ethics, and attitudes. Yes. So he basically is saying, if discrimination alone were to hold the segment, segment of the population back, then the American, Japanese, Chinese, and Jewish population would never have been able to accomplish what they have. So that's controversial. He's basically saying it has nothing to do with race. It's about what you're thinking. Uh, I mean, listen. Which is wild. You can't say that. How would, if I tweeted that, if I tweeted that right now at, you know, Sean King, or if I no. tweeted that, would that not go well? No, that would not go well. That would not go well. That would not go well. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Sowell. If I said, could you imagine? Cuz, could you imagine? <laughs> Thomas Sowell. I'd be bubbish. Bubbish, you couldn't do it. So if Tom I tweeted that at Kamala Harris right now? No, it just wouldn't go well. Yeah, it would not go well. Not good. So let me be honest with you. I got myself a pair of Raycon earbuds. Yeah. I love them. They're right. not too cumbersome. They don't hang off your face. Yeah. I'm telling you, they're half the price of other premium brands. Go with Raycon. Off that alone, let's just be honest for a second. You know how this works by the time with these ad sponsors. They want you to say this, want you to say that. If something's half price in the middle of a pandemic, just buy it. I mean, it's half price. If you go to Raycon.com slash hyenas, you're going to get 15% off already a half price item. So why would you just buy them? They look like they're so expensive. They look like aliens would wear them from future outer space. Go buy your wife or your boyfriend or your partner, whatever you want to do. Go buy this for a gift for them and say, I got you these really expensive, beautiful headphones. They're top quality. They're amazing. They're, am they're, be they're one of the best headphones I've ever put in my ears. And they're half price and 15% off. Why not? Yeah, go to buyraycon.com slash hyenas. Order yourself a pair of Raycon earbuds. Get cute. I got a better idea. How yeah. about you do this? Why don't you do this? Because your wife is, is six, seven months pregnant. Why don't you put one of these Raycon earbuds in her belly button and see if your baby dances a little bit to the music? That's what we're going to do. You know what I love about them is you wear them in your ears. Yeah. And they're, they just look good. They don't, you know when you got that Bluetooth, they're Bluetooth. So it doesn't, oh, yeah. have, That's, it doesn't have that long thing hanging out like you're doing deals. Yeah. You just, you're just nice and hidden and I can listen to my Taylor Swift and nobody bothers me. It's amazing. Listen, what, even when you're out there protesting, whatever you want to do, if you're a protester, put these in your ears. You can block out the noises of frozen bottles and bricks going out there. And if you're a policeman, you could just listen to whatever, you know, Bon Jovi, whatever you want to do. Yeah, It's just go. Go, good for everybody. It's one ear fits all. The, Raycon does not see sex, race, religion, creed, or color. It just sees earbuds, and it says, turn me up, baby. I want to pump the tunes into your ear canal. So Thomas Sowell, I mean, we start out with W.E. Du Bois versus Booker T. Washington. Right. Then we get into an era where, you know, uh, it's Thomas Sowell and then... It's basically the only black uh, thought conservatives. Uh, my nose itches. Sorry, 
The only two black Doing conservatives leaders are basically Thomas Sowell and the other guy's name is William Wallace from Braveheart. That's from Braveheart. Well, you have Larry Elders, Thomas no, Sowell. Before that, it was oh. just, it was, it was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break it down. We're breaking down the black conservative. George, George Washington Carver? George, George Washington Carver is a different era as well. Walter E. Williams. Okay. So you had Walter E. Williams and Thomas Sowell. Thomas Sowell actually famously said there was a time in America where it was just really him and Walter Williams and they had this joke between them that they said that they promised to never be on a plane together at the same time because if it went down, the black conservative movement would be extinguished. Would go down too. Because there's only yeah. two of them. Yeah. So that's what it was. So there was these two black conservatives were really the and they were both economists, free market economists, obviously against minimum wage, against affirmative action, free market thinkers, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just less government, right, pro market, get the government out, got right. the government the government assistance out, minimum wage out, and they would have all these arguments for the harm that it does to the country and specifically to the black community. Now, here is the deal. The black community does have, I think, one of the fastest growing middle classes in the country for sure by ethnic group, definitely. Blacks have done a lot better. But when you look at a lot of the things that these guys said back in the, uh, going back to this, you know, this early 70s, 80s, whatever, a lot of the shit that they said would be the results of these policies, We're these not. liberal policies, no. They kind of seem to be, you're going like, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the black neighborhoods are still fucked. Right. Education is still fucked. And make no mistake, these black communities have been benefiting, not benefiting, sorry, it's the wrong word, have been dictated by liberal policies yes. pretty much since Johnson on. Yeah. So it's like, if yeah. I was black, I'm saying, you know what? I want to go learn about what fucking these guys were saying. Yeah. To see what's going. Let me go find out about Thomas Sowell and William yeah. Wallace. In the 1930s. Walter he said, Williams. He says the massive business failures under government-sponsored black capital programs of the 60s and 70s. So you had what Sowell said is he suggested that ghettoizing urban blacks are like immigrants having headed north in waves from the foreign world of the rural south only in, only in this century. So he's meaning like, listen. When you say you're black, you live in the ghetto, it's it's all, it's it's like this mind thing where he uses the example of the Irish. He says the Irish progressed rapidly without government aid. So urban blacks can too. So he said, you come into this place and you say immediately you're on welfare because we're helping you because we feel bad and all these things. You're, you're just keeping them down. You didn't give Irish people any uh, any uh, welfare or anything like that, and they were able to get out of it. I know that there's a lot of things that happened to the Irish that did not, a, a lot of things that happened to the blacks that did not happen to the Irish, but there is something where it's like you put somebody on government assistance, they get used to that. He also has an example somewhere that I read where he says like, you know, you raising minimum wage, you take and and not raising this and, and and not you know you don't have to have a skill like you know you make a McDonald's to flip a McDonald's hamburger is all of a sudden minimum wage twenty dollars. That's going to make people do that job because they don't want to do the effort to get skilled in a labor that you know would actually be beneficial in society. And you know it's interesting. It's it feels like one of those things where even just two white guys talking about this in 2020, like we need to be in a bunker, we need to be protected. We can't even say what we're saying. Yeah, well, he he said minimum wage is bad because he he took the employer's perspective. He's going, hey, look, you know, he he made an example of like movie theaters in Harlem. He said back in the day they would have a young kid who was working there who would walk you down the aisle and find your seat. Once they started doing a minimum wage, uh, you had to pay uh, your workers a certain amount, so you couldn't afford all those jobs. So you would cut a lot of those right. positions, and so you know it leads to less jobs. So that's what these guys are. These guys are trickle down right. economic people. So the rich create jobs, which they do, but also there's the other side as well. Yeah, as Thomas Sowell said, this. Maybe people are poor not because they have made bad decisions, but because other people have made bad decisions for them. The liberals and civil rights organization have their own grand designs to impose on blacks. And the government is there to see, you have, to see that you have no other choice. If you allow the people to decide, you eliminate all the middlemen, the researchers, consultants, and economists who fatten themselves at the expense of the poor. So he's basically saying, like, it's kind of like the thing that we've been talking about with managers. Like, you just and don't need them. People, and a lot of you woke, don't need them. And a lot of these woke activists... Yeah. The, that's who he's talking about. Like you're, you're telling me what to think. They're saying no. Their, their job literally depends on there being a problem. Right. Like if there was no, if there was no racism, if there was no systematic racism, there's what is Sean King's job? The guy's got a hard enough time 
making income as it is. Right. That's why he's been accused of doing all these fundraisers and stuff and keeping the money. Because where does he get paid for? Yeah, how does he writes new- articles. Nobody pays for articles anymore. So how does Sean King actually make money? Because I know how we make money. Yeah. We tell jobs. How, does, how do the New York Post and the New York Times and all that, how do they operate if there's no scandal? How do they operate if you can't read about a person's life being burnt down, if, if their whole life is crumbling down in front of them? How, how does anyone click on that? It's a little word. And listen, I know I'm going to get, I'm going to say a German word for a second. So just, I'm not turning into a German. Just be careful. Just, I want to prep you with the German word. If you want to muff your ears, Greeks, it's a little word called Schadenfreude, yes. which means that you are basically getting happy and pleasure. It's like reality TV. You're getting pleasure off watching someone's life be destroyed. And that's at the point in history that we're at where that is the only thing people care about. They don't want to read about anyone getting better from the coronavirus or anybody bet or any, any good happening within the racial lines. They only want to read about the deaths and they only want to read about the protests and things burning down. And it is a big time symptom of a society on the decline. It's the same thing that happened at the end of ancient Rome and we're fuck, fuck, fuck bubbas. But what can you do? This is a happy, happy podcast. My cholesterol is too high. I may not be here next week. That was a little segment called Chrissy Long Day's Snickers. Why wait? Yeah, it's just what it is. Cause <laughs> it, it was I, a little segment called Chrissy Clip It. <laughs> it was a goodie. And uh, yeah, I think Thomas Sowell would probably say that you know, um, if, if, if anyone who ben- who's claiming to benefit the community, you would say hey, there's claiming to benefit the community, but their job depends on uh, saying that they need to benefit the community. Right. So you should treat with. Uh, be incredulous about what they're saying right. because they need the community to be disenfranchised in order for you to need them. And the quote that Sowell said that I was trying to make with the McDonald's example, the, Thomas Song, oh, okay. says, when you raise the wages of unskilled labor, you lead people to substitute capital for labor and that helps produce high unemployment. So, it, you know, the skilled labor is out the window because you're saying, I'm going to get paid this much to pretty much do nothing. That breeds a, a, a problem in society. Well, that was his movie theater example saying like yeah right you you start to go like you start to value the money over the people going like right. if i gotta pay this guy guaranteed 20 bucks in order for me to increase my profits profits i have to eliminate all these other jobs that really were kind of quality of service jobs that yeah. i can live without and then he says this he says concerning the issue of busing children they used to black children would be bused to white neighborhoods that was all part of um it was it a part of civil rights well, well, uh, or those affirmative action charter I meant schools. Yeah, those are uh, what are they called? Um, like the, ch- I think they're called uh, charter schools. No, yeah, I actually or Montessori's. Did, I did Not my Montessori's. fucking college thesis on it, and and and, and I can't. What are they called? A magnet school. Magnet school. Magnet so magnet schools where they bus kids in from to, to white schools from black neighborhoods. And what Sowell said with that is he said the situation does not benefit black children and it makes white adults angry. The U.S. Supreme Court's integration decision reflects a paternalistic attitude towards blacks and implies that black children can't learn anything unless they go to school with whites. So I agree with that in the sense of like, why are you making black children feel like, to me, it all makes it, why are you making them feel like outcasts? Right. It's like a white devil thing. To me, it's like, why are you doing that? Right. You, you know, like, why Why do you, I don't know, I don't understand. It's like, if I was a black child, which I know I'm not, I know I haven't went through anything, I know I'm a white piece of shit, I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware, but it's just like, why, if it, to me, true equality would be like, we're all the same from the beginning. I know that there's a thousand things that happen in history. I'm so aware, but it's like, why not? Like, why do I have to say, hey, you know, there's an affirmative action or you're, you're coming up from this neighborhood and I'm sorry you live there, but you, hey, you're going to school with the white kids now. Isn't that great? No. Just go. We can. We, it should all be integrated. Yeah, well, I think. It's, uh, I hate it. Liberals would say. Liberals would say to you, well, because of systematic racism and oppression, it's not. Liberal even- white people would say that. A lot of liberal black people would say that as well. But, but the whites would be louder with it because I feel like the liberal whites are the biggest problem. I think both would say that. I think extremely po- liberal whites. Li- liberals would say, "Hey, there's been systematic racism. We didn't Which get it. E- we haven't gotten equal playing. F- we haven't had an equal playing field." Thomas Sowell had a response to that. His response, which is controversial, is sort of when you look at the Irish. They immigrated here, and uh, their first generation kind of kind of sucked it up. They were forced into conscription to the Union Army or whatever, and they ate dirt. They were discriminated against, and then by the second generation, they became cops, got these uh, jobs, and then. They, right. were, they progressed. And the same up. with the Jews, he's At, saying. All of them. Yeah. All, all ethnic groups. He was saying you can make the comparison to blacks moving from the south to the north. Right. Where they're segregated. He goes, going to the north. He said basically it was like going to another country. It was like it was like it, blacks were immigrants. Southern blacks were immigrants to the north, kind of akin to Irish and all that. So he would basically say 
ignore white privilege, you know all that shit, that shit doesn't exist. Just, right. And that's what Booker T. Washington would sort of back. So that's where you can see the connection between guys like Thomas Sowell having yeah. their roots in Booker T. Washington's thinking. Just put your head down, fucking work, work hard, and prove them wrong with results. In Forbes magazine in 1981, Sowell was interviewed and he commented, Puerto Ricans, Mexican Americans, and blacks don't have any higher income than they had before compared to whites. In some cases, they have less because of all these programs. Cuz, if we looked at your DMs, would you say you are the most equal opportunity DMer? Cuz, I Cuz your fucking, your DMs proves how much of a lover of all races you are. Cuz, I'm a lover of all races. You will see my DMs. I'm telling you, it will not discriminate against color, creed, or religion at all. As long as you got a big dick, you're getting a DM. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming, yeah, guys. It's called a fucking curveball. Yeah. Chrissy curveballs. Even though I make a gay joke every you, time I'm on a podcast. Because your dick is the biggest liberal cuck of all because it accepts all genders, all races, all religions, yeah. all creeds. Yeah, it's just what it all is. All weights, cuz. I yeah. mean, you do not body shame. Yeah. You'll take whatever, cuz. Your dick is like the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. I'm going to call your dick Ellis Island. Give me your tired, your hungry, whatever, cuz. It's what it is, cuz. Yeah. You fuck everybody. I fuck everybody, cuz. My haircut's a fucking Nazi. My dick's a Black Panther. Because <laughs> it's what it is. Clip it. Clip it. So, um, yeah. And look, Sal's also commented on... Every time you say that, it sounds like you're saying Sal. Sal. Because you're Thomas fucking Sal. right trash New York accent. Thomas Soul. <laughs> Thomas Soul. Thomas Hart and Soul says that... <laughs> He, he commented on current on the issues in like 1981. He was saying liberal media bias and judicial activism, you know, when he, all these things are going to be a problem. He defended originalism, which originalism is what? Like not getting rid of a Confederate statue because it's there? No, I don't know what the fuck that is. Let's look What's up originalism. Original. Did he it, make up a fucking word again? Yeah, what is originalism? In Origi the context of the United States law, originalism is a concept regarding the interpretation of the Constitution that asserts that all statements in the Constitution must be interpreted based on the original understanding of the authors. Got it. Oh, so it means like it's basically a literal interpretation of the Constitution and you're married and stuck to it and it's not changing. He defended that? Because I would argue that I think he would be against that because it's like... No, he'd be Because you can't... Because like the right to bear arms is something that like... That's, that, that was needed in 1780, but right. it's not needed now. But that's a well, liberal... Well, it may be needed back again. But that's a liberal position. So liberals would go more... And and you know what you got to say the the liberal the, the I would think the founding fathers would side more with the liberals on this because right. the the founding fathers created the Constitution as a living, breathing document. There's plenty of documented yeah. writings by the founding fathers saying that it's to be amended. Yeah, that's what amendments are. This thing is supposed to constantly change with the times. So, but he would say let's stick to what they said. Right to bear arms, doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. Don't right. amend, don't amend, don't amend. We don't need a Voting Rights Act. We don't need this. Women shouldn't vote. You know, of course, all of that course shit. those things. I mean, yeah. the, I mean, let's, come on, Thomas Sowell. I mean, they didn't even have, the, the fucking founding fathers didn't even put women in the Constitution to be able to vote. Are we not supposed to amend that? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it was a good decision, but I mean, the bitches yeah. make a lot of noise and ask for votes. It's just what what are you going to do? You got to give them what they want. You can't win. I'm just such a fucking mixed bag because I just, because I am a centrist, and I just, my views, I don't know what to do with myself. But your I, family votes to the right. My family votes to the right, but it's also like, you know, like my daughter's Puerto Rican. It's like her mom, like when she got pregnant. But you, like, Thomas Sowell would say you're automatically saying because your daughter's Puerto Rican, she votes to the left. No, but she does. But that's the thing. It's like, well, not if I got something to do with it, she's not. <laughs> um, it's just like one of those things where like I gave her mother, like her mother, absolutely, I was all for her mother on the right to choose if she wanted to have the baby. But I just said when the baby's born, I want to build a wall around it. It's Puerto Rican. <laughs> I said when you said, when you gave her babies, but I was I was about, I thought you were gonna say credit card. Oh, credit card. Yeah. Well, you know, I do. I you know, it's one of those things. Which, by the way, I just got. <laughs> I, I'm doing a show August 29th at the Monmouth Racetrack, and my agent said he doesn't know where the deal came from, and I think it came from Barney Rubble because the guy's got me doing comedy shows at the racetrack now. But those tickets are on sale. Go to ChristyComedy.com for tickets. They're selling quick. It's all outdoors, socially distant. Because how many people have open credit cards in your name? It's a lot. You're a Christmas tree. You got a lot of ornaments hanging off. Yeah. You. Sometimes I'll fuck it. Yeah, I'll get a call sometimes from a credit card company looking for my father, and I say he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll say, how could he be dead? He just tried, he just fucking went crazy at Sunoco. Um, so, because Thomas Sowell, we graduate from, from Booker T. Washington to Thomas Sowell to today. 
Yeah. Tommy T. Sowell, he's 90. He's Chris Pappas' age. Wow, T. Sowell's an old kid. Yeah, Chris Pappas is fucking waiting for Thomas Sowell because they're both Korean War vets, and yeah. they're both going to end up in the gay section of in heaven. In the gay section of heaven, yeah. But, I mean, I don't Because you can't be an economist and not be a gay kid, no? You yeah, you got to be a gay kid. Even though he's conservative, he's still a gay kid because of how much reading he did and how many books he wrote. Only yeah. a gay guy would sit there and want to write all these books. Um, so then we graduate to... Uh, unless, wait, let me, let me say, one, okay. of the, one of the main characteristics of black conservatism is its emphasis on personal choice and responsibilities above socioeconomic status and institutional racism. So it's, that's where I think the problem is the institutional racism is, this, is the sticking point to most black people where the, you know, they're saying, that a black conservative would say, we need to get out of that through, you know, working hard and more right. Booker T. Washington type things. So it's very, it's a tough thing. Right. Uh, I think as the historical experts that we are, you can basically say, I my personal opinion is you need both. But right. it seems like one has really been forgotten for the expense of the other. It bears noticing. It bears are bringing you putting, up. Are you putting... Something on notice right I now? Are you saying you're bearing notice? Because it's a big difference. No, I will fucking put everyone, including myself, on notice. Well, I'm putting my cholesterol on notice. You're fucking on notice. Uh, yeah. Here, it does bear the black community, black people, uh, by and large, almost entirely voted Republican before yeah, wow. yes yes i mean until yes. until we get to abraham lincoln was republican folks cuz they voted republican i mean the the uh, they voted republican up until if i if i'm correct is it kennedy who was the first one where they started i think it was kennedy it might have been it might have been fdr too i think fdr got a big FDR, chunk of the black vote no it's till fdr yes. it started really the switch started happening at fdr right okay and so that's when the switch started and so the blacks started voting uh, Democratic there, and then, of course, that was reinforced by Kennedy and Johnson, and they kept voting uh, to the left. But before that, they voted Republican. I mean, the parties kind of shifted in certain things that they believed in to a certain extent, and, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of details in there, but blacks didn't always vote Democratic. They didn't always vote Democratic. Abe Lincoln was a Repub. They were Repubby Pubby, but then the Democrats came in with a type of, or the Republicans had a, had a Southern, the, I think it switched when they tried to steal the Southern vote. The Democrats tried to steal the Southern vote. Well, I think uh, it start, something happened. It started to switch when Democrats started to try to appeal to racist white Southern voters a little bit more. Yeah, it started Southern. to, yeah, and, and, now, started, and now it's kind of pinnacled when, when in- I'm sorry, when Republicans, I'm sorry, when Republicans start, Republican uh, politicians started to try to appeal a little bit more to racist white Southern Democrats right. to win that vote, blacks kind of switched. They started voting for more uh, uh, liberal left policies, but those policies were protecting- there are civil rights. You're talking about the Voting Rights Act. You couldn't disenfranchise black right. people. And, you know, so you so can't So it's all based in somewhat good things. You can't just say, hey, right. babe, Thomas Sowell, just like right. everyone's in charge of their own destiny, just work hard. Right. It's just not realistic. So that, but right. you also can't just set up a complete safety net for a whole race of people and say, hey, guys, this is the only way you can make it. So yeah. the truth, like all things, like our sexualities, lies in the middle. It lies in the middle. It lies in the middle, and that's the thing, and that's, you know, Jan's very good way of explaining it. And then it kind of just like, it, like anything else, it goes too far. It's like, first, it starts out with what you were saying, which is good things, the Democrats trying to get the Southern vote that way. But now it's pinnacled in Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi walking into Congress like the extras and coming to America. I mean, it can't happen. <laughs> it's what it is. It just goes too far because yeah. we, it, most, most importantly, the black people can see through your fucking bullshit if you're walking into Congress with dashikis on. Yeah. They know it's not real. They know it's bullshit. They know. Listen, Nancy Pelosi drinks Pepsis that are flavored with aborted fetuses from Hillary Clinton. Clip it. <laughs> you clip that shit and catch us on our new series, Conspiracy Cuties, where we get to the bottom of fucking everything. Also, watch WEPA in the morning. Join our second tier to be able to watch that every day, or you can jo our, join our lowest tier to listen to it every day, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Live, Web on the morning and other good stuff, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. So now we go from Yeah. We go we go from Thomas Sowell and Walt I mean Venetia has got her text up on the nose. I mean, because we're looking I mean, at v, your what text. Are you doing? We're looking at your text. Who's Ramon? <laughs> <laughs> 
Cuz uh, you better hope your pops not watching this. Yeah, cuz we can always threaten Venetia can't do anything to us cuz we can always just say we're going to tell your baba. Yeah. So, now let's graduate to today cuz yeah. the reason yeah, let's get the reason back to what makes this what makes this episode so interesting, the history of the black conservatives is because now today the black conservative movement, believe it or not, is stronger than it's ever been. And let me say this, because a lot of people don't know this. More black people voted for, Demo- for I'm sorry, more black people voted for Donnie Trump than they did Romney and uh, the one before, the Republican before him, George Bush. George Bush. So, I mean, And Donnie, McCain. D- and McCain. Yeah. So, Donnie T has a, has a high percentage right. of black people voting for him because he's a Republican and blacks almost exclusively vote Democrat. So the black conservative movement, the black Make America Great Again hat crew has grown. Their most prominent members is uh, she's a little bit of oh. she's a little bit of a piece. Who? Oh, Candace, Candace Owens. Owens. Candace yeah. Owens. Candace Owens. She's not a bad looking person. Yeah, Candace Owens and whose she, biggest sin is she's married to a white man. That's that, the problem that's, with her. That's the thing. So we, yeah. nobody's going to listen to a word she says on the left because yeah. of that. If you're black, so she gets yeah, rid. Candace of- Owens has been DM'd. It's just what it is. So yeah. Candace Owens, uh, Candace Owens. And- when you listen to Candace Owens, I understand she gets radical, but she does say things that are based in fact sometimes. So it's hard to disagree with someone all the time when she says, "I have a fact to back this up." I'm just gonna it's give the my problem. Yeah, I'm gonna give my fucking Jerry Springer, Yanni Long Day thought of the day. Let's you, do it. You gotta stop fucking judging people on their person and revering or hating people based on ad hominem attacks. Listen to what they say, cherry pick what you like, create your own thing, whether they be liberal or conservative, and fix it, baby, because life is a farmer's market and you can't just leave with cookies. That's what it is. That's Yanni ad hominem, Yanni ad homo. Yeah. Ray Jong Jan. So we got Candace Owens, we also got Antonio. Antonia Okafor, she's another big... No pr- relation to Emeka Okafor. This maybe, maybe. I haven't looked great into Great ball that. player, Emeka Okafor. Not really. He was a great college ball player. Great college ball player. But he kind and, of uh, was a bust. American But he was a, kind of a bust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess he kind of was. In the, in the NBA, he was a little bit of a bust. Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell. Now, this is... Now, this is... Here's, here's a list of, like, prominent... Current prominent black conservatives to let you know that hey, it's not just Candace Owens out there, and these people are some prominent people, and they always just get made fun of in Herman the media. Cain, Alan I mean, it's kind of interesting. Herman Cain is a fucking CEO. I mean, he's a he's a he's a he's a multi multi million. The kid made some sticks. The kid sold some fucking tickets. tickets. And then we got Alan. Because are we going to put tickets to your birth of your child on StubHub or not? Absolutely. freaking We want to do it, and we'll give Patreon members a discount. Absolutely, cuz. <laughs> yeah. Cuz, we're absolutely freaking lootly Yeah, your wife better be in on it. And then Alan West. Who's Alan West again? Can you look at Alan him? West is real. He's a former military uh, guy, and he's a very prominent member of the black conservative movement, and he goes around and gives a lot of speeches, um, and, uh, you know, I- I've listened to a lot of things he said, and... He's kind of just like, he seems like a real guy, like a guy based in reality. Um, but look, Texas Republicans, uh, you know, don't, uh, a lot of people are like against him. So I don't fucking know. Well, but he was a, he's a former, it seems like he was a former congressman. Former congressman, former but he's congressman. also in the military. He's definitely military. Yes. Yeah, American politician, retired, retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel. So that's, lieutenant, wow, he's a lieutenant lollipop. He was a lieutenant lollipop, and he was, <laughs> he was also uh, Colonel Cuddles. Yeah, so Alan, Persian Gulf War in Iraq. Yeah, so he's a war, he's a war veteran and a former uh, member of the House, I believe, and um, served in the Pro- Persian Gulf War and uh, the, served in the Iraqi War. So we have Alan West. Let's go back to our list because our list is getting longer. Well, our list, well, before... Thomas Sowell was a cute kid. Cute kid. So was W. Dubois. Yeah. But the list also, if we could go back to the notes, V, the list in 2001, there was a list. Yeah, if we could just go down a little bit because it's it's interesting how, like, you know, entertainment and all these lists, it's just... No, it was in your notes, V. If you just go back. Yeah, here we go. In uh, Ebony, very prominent magazine, in May of 2001, listed their 100 most influential black Americans, and it did not include Thomas Sowell, Shelby Steele, Armstrong Williams, Walter Williams, and most notably Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. I yeah. mean, Clarence Thomas, it doesn't, it didn't include them because they didn't, because they were conservatives. Well, here's the deal. Clarence Thomas, this is, I, I'm, I'm 79 years old. You're an old kid. I'm a little older than you kids, and I would have got away with it if it wasn't for you meddling in my business. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's going to be good because your daughter's going to be able to be on Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. It's, 
The Supreme <laughs> Court in America, in our system, is a very powerful institution that a lot of people uh, criticize. They criticize the founding fathers, and they, they call it the runaway court because they basically make law of the land. And so whoever's on the bench yeah. is really fucking important to what you believe. Right. So Clarence Thomas, a little guy named, uh, there was another guy named... Uh, Ruth Brett, Bader Ginsburg? Brett Kavanaugh. Oh, that yikes. Guy. Those Brett two, Kavanaugh. what they have in common is uh, uh, Clarence Thomas at the time, he was accused of sexual misconduct and harassment by Anita Hill, who said that he put a pubic hair on a Coke can. Which is, so I was, mean, that's a wild thing to do. It's a wild thing, but it was a very famous thing. Obviously, much like Kavanaugh, the hearings happened. It was a big media thing, and uh, he was cleared. It was found that uh, you know, hey, hey we're gonna we're gonna give him the job. It's not credit. It's not an, It's not credible enough. It's a he said, she said. We don't have any evidence. Blah blah blah. But it was a strong attempt to uh, to get rid of Clarence Thomas. I met Clarence Thomas. What? I met Clarence How did you Thomas. Clarence Thomas. Because I went to the American University. My Mentor, my the the uh, American the head of the American Studies Department. I was an American Studies history major. Did Clarence Thomas need to get the escalator or what? what? Was Edward Smith? He, my mentor was a black kid. He was uh, he leaned right, and he was friends. We wow. were do, we were doing a class in the Supreme Court, and we went and we met Clarence Thomas and listened to him speak. The kid is also squeak. He's squeak. He was a he wasn't Clarence that Thomas much a of a squeak, but a, ta- a little bit of a squeak. Because you also have a picture in your home with you and President Bill Clinton. So, what are your comments on the pedophile ring? Is he on the Epstein list? I don't know. All I know is that my I I, I don't I all I don't know. I don't have. But you do have a picture with Billy Clinton. I do have a picture with Billy Clinton because my brother used to work for him. Your brother used to work for him yeah. and I've been telling people that. That your brother, that the, your brother is actually um, the real inspiration of the gay character, gay lawyer character from the show Scandal, and I've made it up, but people do believe that I have convinced people that the show Scandal, which has a very prominent gay lawyer in the show, was actually based off Giannis's three dollar bill brother. Yes. And so if you've heard that, if you've heard me say that it is a lie, but it is believable, because make no mistake. R.I.S. Reality is a suggestion. It is a suggestion, and anything that Chris Giannis says, bring this text back up. So buckle up. Up. And also, because I get yelled at if I do this on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Just also remember, anything Chris says, it's the chances of it being real are about five percent. I would say even lower, buddy. Yeah. yeah. It's just you. It's all a. He's a liar. It's a liar. So yeah, yeah you he's can stop inter- DMing me about drug counseling. I've never done blow in my life. It's never happened. The kid is a liar. He does it for entertainment purposes. You got to treat him the way we treat him. Dennis Rodman, babe. Go with the fucking flow. Go with the flow. It doesn't matter. What are we going to read now? I just wanted to say that on August 12th, I'm going to be doing one show. That's it. Just one fucking show. You might add a second one. No, yeah, I might add a second one, but I'm only performing once, and that's going to be at Soul Joel's Summer Comedy Festival in Royersford, Pennsylvania. Shows at 7 p.m. Go to Soul Joel's. Dot com for tickets. That's it. I'm doing one fucking well, show. Not. Also, Giannis Papa's Comedy.com. They got to be up there, right? I haven't put them up there. Put them up there. By the time the episode comes out, it will be on Giannis Papa's Comedy.com and HistoryIhenas.com for Giannis Day. Just know it's August 12th, and I'll be posting a link, so look for that. But you can go to SoulJoel.com and get tickets Absolutely. at the Royal Fruits Outdoor. Soul- it's outdoor, socially distanced, all that. Yes, we're only doing outdoor shows, and Soul Joel, a good friend of the show, we, we, we love Soul Joel, but he is the inspiration for Franks and Beans. I mean, um, the, the, yeah, the kid, the yeah. kid. I mean, I mean look, he is the definition of it. I mean, he's effing be incorporated. Yeah, he's effing He's the greatest guy. I love Soul Joe. And when I started out, Soul Joe gave me a lot of work. So let's get back to And here to we go. Topic. And just when we were kind of, you know, fumbling around how the historical basis of the Republican Democrat black vote, and we have it here from Reconstruction right after the Civil War period up until the New Deal, where pretty much America became the good guys, the black population tended to vote Republican. During that period, the Republican Party, particularly in the southern United States, was seen as more racially liberal than the Democratic Party, primarily because of the role of the southern wing of the Democratic Party as the party of racial segregation and the Republican Party's roots in the abolition movement, a la Abraham Lincoln. Blacks started to shift in significant numbers to the Democrats with the election of FDR and continue with the election of JFK. So there you have it. Yes. So let's fu- let's pull that list up of prominent Democrat, uh, re- Republican, Demo- uh, blacks again, and then and then so- also, can we just read the Atlanta Agreement before we end the episode? Sure. And we, but we also got to talk. Uh, we uh, we got to talk a little bit. But let's let's get that list up again. Yeah. There so we, go. we got Clarence Thomas, uh, Rod Page, 
Alfonso Jackson. I mean, these are all Colin Powell, of course, Condoleezza Rice. These were two cabinet members, black, very high level. Tim Scott, these are all politicians. Keep going. I think right now, actually, there's 237 or something black members of the House of Representatives, which is about 12% of the House, which is on par with the population number that the blacks are, the population. Blacks are about 12, 13% of the overall population. In the House, at least, they are accurately represented. Right now, it's historic. In, in At this moment, there's probably 200 and something, I don't remember the exact number, black members of the House of Representatives. So that's something. But here's some more big fucking. You got you got Ken Blackwell. You got uh you got a lot of people. You got a lot of these are all politicians though, right? These are just yeah, let's get back to let's get back to the black conservatives though. Because a lot of people never heard these people's names. I mean they've heard Herman Cain. Only thing people do is made fun of Herman Cain. The media all they've done was made fun of Herman Cain and the only thing they've done is made fun of um of uh uh the, who's the Secretary of Housing? Uh Condoleezza Rice? No, he's a, he's a brain surgeon. Ben Carson. Ben Carson. Who's he's a, a fucking brain he's surgeon. He's a fucking brain surgeon. That kid will fucking, that kid will take out your medulla amalgam and put you in some sauce. Say, you'll say, and look, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, fucking Reverend Al Sharpton, who is a liberal, who got a fucking show on CNN or whatever it is, is one of the most corrupt figures in New York City local politics fucking history. And he also had a horrific perm for most of the 70s and 80s and was was fucking grossly overweight, but the kid would walk around with a $20 million Rolex and show up at fucking any race hustling event that went down. Go Google Tawana Brawley. It was all made up. He probably orchestrated it. The kid lost the weight doing keto. Yeah, Tawana Brawley was a uh, was a big, big story in New York, but he was, I mean, he's a fucking, I mean, he's got a checkered past, but they got him on video. They got, they got, they got him on video as an undercover sting, taking money, taking fucking bribe money, and the kids on TV, and nobody even fucking has a good thing to say about Ben Carson, who's a brain surgeon. Yeah. So you gotta ask yourself, am I fucking conditioned to think a certain way? I don't know. I'm a liberal kid, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, we know. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a lot. To, we got a lot. We got a lot. So we let's just, in, just real quick. The, just the Atlanta Compromise, what the Atlanta Compromise... This was Booker T. Washington. This is Booker T. Washington. It was, a, it was an agreement struck in 1895 between Booker T. Washington, president of the Tuskegee Institute at the time. Well, he founded the Tuskegee, Tuskegee Institute. Yeah. He's founded it. Uh, and, and, and other African leaders and Southern white leaders. It, oh, but w the agreement was that Southern blacks would work and submit to white political rule while Southern whites guaranteed that blacks would receive basic education and due process and law. Blacks would not focus their demands on equality, integration, or justice, and Northern, rights, Northern whites would fund black education charities. So it's just kind of like anything else in agreement. It's, it's, it's like you give a little, take a little, but I understand how blacks wouldn't be happy with this, but I also understand how it may have been a thing that could have push things forward. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. It's like you read that today and you're going like, oh, that doesn't sound good. It obviously didn't sound good to W.E. Du Bois. Um, but at the time, you got you to you put people in their historical context. This was a kid who was born into slavery, who was trying, who founded the Tuskegee Institute, who was trying to empower his people through uh, economic liberty, achievement, trade, skills. So he was trying to broker a deal in the South. With right. these fucking racist Southern people. W.E. Du Bois. That's the catch. That's the thing. It was so Southern racist whites. He was living in that world. And also, when you look at some of the segregated areas in the segregated times, you look at some of those, uh, you, uh, like we did an episode on Tulsa. That was during segregation. Right. Those places flourished. Right. They were flourishing more than white areas. So... Uh, you can't say Booker T. Washington was all wrong. Because right. he was saying, fuck it. You guys want to think you're better? Fine. You want segregation? Fine. Have your fucking thing. Just give us this so we can build our own thing. Because he was talking, he was thinking long term. Booker T. Washington was thinking, you know what? We uplift ourselves and then eventually they'll see it. And in the future down the road, when generations go by... Everyone will come together. That was his plan. He was thinking long term. W.E. Du Bois was like, fuck that. I'm listening to what you're saying. That in, 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 fuck the context. Fuck where we are. Fuck those people. It's not right. We need to change that fucking now. Let's do that fucking now. I don't give a shit about your long term plan. 
long-term plan. Give me justice now. That was the difference between the two of them. They, they, neither one of them was all bad or all good. Yeah. They're all in the middle. They're all in the gray zone. Go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Where you at? In the middle. Go on the community board or go to youtube.com slash history hyenas and write down, tell us, are you BTW or WEB? Are you, Who are you? Are you team BT or are you team Dubois? Because I understand there's arguments to be had for both, but on the on the grand scheme of things, I just want to say in closing that we here at the History Hyenas love every member of every community and we invite everybody to join and listen in. We're from New York City. I know that some of our members don't like when we say that, but we're our New York City kids. It's very hard to be racist. We have a member of the black community that work for us in Venetia. So we are 100% all-inclusive, woke and dope. We just like to have conversations on this podcast that we hope don't get us canceled, but just inspires more conversation. And that's how you get a prosperous society, by canceling every single thing, every time a question is brought up that you don't like, by canceling them, does do it does nothing at all. It does nothing. But keep the people down that are trying to get up. It keeps them down. And it's just shitty journalists and shitty fucking comedians on Twitter or bloggers on Twitter that only do that shit because they are not talented at all and the only way they can even make a cent of money is by keeping the division alive and we here at the Australians do not want to divide we want to bring it in and I want you to open up your assholes and let me dock you let you get in there yeah. so that's what it is we hope you yeah. enjoyed this episode on the history of the black conservative I gotta movement. pee yeah, yeah go ahead you gotta pee I gotta pee so it's just uh, we're gonna do the Patreon names but we're gonna have to pause go it. ahead go pee because the chlamydia might be back just history hyenas fucking nobody does history as accurately as we are let's get everybody into the gray zone follow ideas politics don't revere people absolutely and you check us check all our live dates uh, JanusPompasComedy.com ChrisDComedy.com and if you see Venetia at any protest fucking DM us and we'll put her on notice put her because on notice because she can't put us at risk for corona yes um, just just quickly I just want to say uh, August 68th Stress Factory New Jersey is sold out thank you very much uh, August 21st 22nd I'll be airing in Governor's Comedy the Club hyena on Long Island sorry you can repeat that I just want to say the Hyena fans fucking coming out strong selling out for Chrissy D sell out the rest of his fucking shows let's go matriarch. they're coming August 21st, 22nd, Governor's Comedy Club, Long Island, going on sale probably now. Check the link, ChristyComedy.com. August 29th, it's a big one. Monmouth Racetrack, Oceanport, New Jersey. Two shows, socially distanced. Every show I do is outdoors, but August 29th, uh, ChristyComedy.com, Monmouth, New Jersey. Go get the tickets also at HistoryAnas.com. Get tickets for our shows. Get our merch. We have a, a Reality of Suggestion shirt is flying off the shelves. It doesn't, nothing encompasses 2020 like reality is a suggestion. So go cop that shirt at HistoryAnas.com. Um, and now Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. I want to read off the newest members of the matriarchy. We have a great time doing this. We encourage the funny names. And uh, you get a shout out from us. And if you get the funniest name, you get a PPW pseudo penis of the week. Yeah. So let me just get it up here on my feed. We celebrate you either way. We also have a bunch of new t-shirts that are about to go up but reality is a suggestion uh, we have uh, that's a fave that's a fave ladder 14 we got our logo shirts finally up you can get the history hyenas logo you can get your way zhong jing shirts you get masks we have history hyenas masks we got tote bags and we got butt plugs coming soon we do so it's, <laughs> it's what it is true story All right, here's the newest members of the matriarchy without further ado okay here we go my chihuahua raped my pit bull it's what it is and okay. actually i used to have a chihuahua who, who did that yeah there we go. Then we got Texas, Texas made suck your toes and eat your holes. Hey, McConaughey, twenty twenty. Goody, that's goody. Drexler right out the bat. That's now a goody. Got yeah, a fully. We got a fully charged three dollar bill, De Blasio. <laughs> <laughs> goody, catapult. Yeah, roll out the catapult. You know where to put him. Then we got uh, Chrissy and his corn nuts been nutting in dudes' butts. <laughs> <laughs> wall? No, yeah, he goes over the wall into the list. Then we got Luis Martinez. Uh, then we got Ku Klux Chrissy in the sheets, steel pipe Chrissy in the streets. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a funny, but it gets on the Drexler because we just we can't support that. Can't support that. Uh, Peter Welsh. Then we got James. My wheezy piece has the Rona. Fuck you. Uh, oh, that's a Drexler. It's at least a Drexler. That's uh, catapult him onto the fucking list. I'm feeling I'm feeling generous today. Then we got uh, we got Nicky No Dick who sold his piece in the East to help boost the trans fans. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. You got to take your hat off for when a, when a real classic comes through. When you get a reread, you know it's good. Yeah, just can Nicky you... No Dick, who sold his piece to the East to help boost the trans fans. That's the, that's the winner. I mean, how are you going to beat that? No, we said last time that we did this the last time. and then we, we If we don't have a dark horse that comes out of nowhere, that's the clear winner. Okay, number 10, we got Litany Houston, who's a reread. I think with Litany Houston, we had them last week, but maybe they 
change their pledge. Then we got uh, AJ, COVID ruined seeing Chrissy in Boston, so I got tickets to fly to Zanies, and DL ruined that. It's not meant to be, babe. We, that was last week's, too. Is yeah, the list it. fucked up? We may have a fucked up list. Just a couple. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Um, Fernando Transylvania the second, Eric Prout, Gagey the Guinea Goomba, uh, and then we got Chrissy Bruce my cooch because he's an eight inch moose. Okay, John Mike Glasser. Then we got Eric started listening to the potty. Now I shoot glue in my navel and my ass smells like witch hazel. <laughs> On the list, but he's it's definitely... All these guys are getting on the list, but they're Drexlers. Kylie Calamari, a.k.a. Major Mojito. We had that one last that time. That was I last that. time, yeah. We go, but some, okay. some re-reads, but maybe they changed their pledge. Yeah. That's probably what it is. They, re they moved up to 10. No, but then... No, they wouldn't get a... They wouldn't be on nope. the list again. I don't... We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Robbie with the tiny knobby is on his way to crack open Yanni. You know what it is? Venetia probably just got a little distracted because she was redoing another draft of the email she's going to send once we get something. Wait, yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah. yeah, she's just focused on that email. Yeah, it's just what it is. <laughs> then we got Chubby Balls. Chubby Balls. Uh, sand Monkey with a cut piece and cute feet. <laughs> um, I've got no hands and no feet. How much will you charge to beat my meat? We had him. I know. Then we got the rigorous Frankie Fettuccine. Uh, we never rigorous had him. Frankie Fettuccine gets a Drexler. Johnny Femus, a.k.a. Crumb Bomb, Jess Lindquist. Then we got Colonel Cupcake, Cracked Open, Cuddling Cock, and Catch and Come. <laughs> then we got Mr. I.C. Wiener. Then we got Non Toot, New York City Iron Worker Brute, Didn't Wear a Cover. Now the safety girl from my job is my baby's mother. Fuck Local 3, RuPaul 2020. We had this last week. Well, these guys were, yeah, these are all goodies, too. Okay. Um, I'll just read them. Um, Joseph, Joseph Archie, DJ Mizop, Scarlet Villatoro. Keon, Chrissy, please fill my prostate like a $3 bill till 3 Esprit. Cody Ladd, Matt, Venetia's dad won't let Andrew Schultz come over. It's what it is. <laughs> That's what gets on the list. Then we got uh, call me $3 Bill Buckner because I'll spread my legs for your balls. That that was the, that, and that by was, the way, you're the winner for last week. Yeah. We, we never put it on Patreon, but you're the winner. Yeah. You're the winner. Caleb Zaloga, Mike. Then we got I'm a factory and Chrissy is a retired horse. I'm going to crack him up and make some glue. These are all last week's. These are last week's. Then we got, um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, yeah, let me. Uh, I think we're having some technical difficulties on this. But it's should okay. We, should we pause it and just figure out what's going on? Yeah. Uh, Emmy up to 10 bucks because I'm Franks and Beans Cuck. Matthew Shawls. Then we got Caleb the Sperm Bank. Hold on. Caleb the Sperm Bank Night Janitor. Who takes home extra Baba Ganoush? Okay. Wanna more? Then we got Salma, a no fume Sandra D, but make no mistake, Chrissy D can crack open this Middle Eastern pea. Praise Allah. <laughs> My cousin, who's a muzzy, drinking smoothies with the cuties, changing gender like the weather, says Ladder 14. Go fuck yourself. Then we got it's a goodie. Bluegrass monkey with nuclear fumes. Daddy says, don't vote Democrat. Uh, <laughs> Keely, Rave Kanyas, Jane Hooker, Sam Nimmer. Tyler, I ate bat stew, got the woo flu. Now my butt is leaking poo. Kennedy. Uh, wait a second. Is that not a repeat? That, I think it might be a repeat. That's a strong on the list. I'm going to get. Uh, yeah. Then we got Cock and Tuck, uh, Shane McC McCullen, Lucas Kaczynski. Yeah, guy, straight to the back. Then we got Maddie, the Irish cousin, the Adolf Lady Hips, and the Suzuki Sauce Monkey Swain. That's last week. <laughs> yeah. Sid Batson. Then we got uh, this is this and this, you know, this is the one that gave the Bill Buckner one a run for its money, Kareem Abdul Fumar. Yeah, Kareem Abdul Fumar. You're right there, but I'm giving it to Bill Buckner. But you, yeah. you're, it could have went either way. Listen, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read another 25. Yeah, here we go. Uh, pixel, pixel packet. Then we got Father Bill fed me a pill, and when I came to, I was coated in glue. Flap. Uh, that's on the list. Yeah, no, but that's that's last week. All right, but I'm throwing him again. He gets a double. Flap face or clown feats last week. Frankie Max. Weppa in the morning. Weppa in the evening. Weppa at supper time when pizza's on a bagel. Get the fuck out of my city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's on the list. That's a new one. That's, yeah, on, that's the on the list. Then we got Lisa, uh, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, then we got Mira, Chrissy, it's me. Mention my Zoom classes in your stupid skits or I'll wep your lunch lady ass. Put it on the list. Okay. Yeah. Then we got Jared, not Sean Alexander. <laughs> we have a fun time on this yeah. podcast. We really do. Then we got Zachary, Dalton, Markle. Then we got Steve becoming a non toot for the daily chance to get a view of Chrissy or Yanni's glute shoot or glue gun Smith. Where the fuck did glute shoot and poop flute and skin flute Where come from? Out. Yeah. Dan Caulfield, Robbie Bobby. Robbie Bobby, no doubt, swallow rope so babies come out. Then we got Colonel <laughs> Crack Me Open, cutie reporting for duty. Yeah, -O -O put, yeah, put him on the list. Yeah. Then we got Yanni Marquis, Marquis Shad, FF, Comsock, Pappas. 
Uh, okay. Austin Odalin, Austin Odalin. Then we got Hardcore FCF, who's headed straight to the back because I'm just here for the content in the mesh 2020. <laughs> If it gets muffin chops cooking like that, I'm throwing them on the list. Then we got Venatifa, Torch My Deli on Flatbush and 3rd Avenue. Put them on the fucking list. Yeah. Put them on the fucking list. <laughs> then we got Steel Pipe Chrissy. It's what it is. See? Yes, cuz. Yeah. Then we got Tanner. My dad evaded my taxes last year, so now he calls me by my prison name, Sweet Meat Mitzel. <laughs> Drexler. We got, Strong list. Then we got Greek Florida Squeak chasing bugs like a fumigator. Charles McBride, DJ. Then we got the twink trapped under Tim Dillon's sink. Yeah, put him on the list. Yeah. Put the fuck That's last week, though. Is it? Yeah. How did I miss that? Was he just that much upstaged by uh, Kareem abdul Fumare? I think so. Yeah, we just had such a strong uh, list. We'll throw him on this week if just as a fucking... The twink caught underneath Tim Dillon's sink is a goodie. Yeah. <laughs> then we got uh, Nate Heinrich. Game winner bounce pass to Father Bill. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Put them on the list. Yeah. They're all losing to the guy. But Then we got yeah. Yahweh, Yahweh Jugs, yeah. um, Missed Grandfather Bill Claus, S-L-O-K-S, Todd Kirkland. Then we got Luis Sasson Fumes was a 10 out of 10 Alvarez. Wait, wait, wait. Sasson Fumes? He's, Sasson a, he's, Fumes. he's a repeat, too. He's, yeah, he's trying to repeat. sneak back in there. Yeah. Sasson Fumes is a classic, though. Yeah. Sasson Fumes is a classic. Yeah, I'll read 20 more, and that's yeah. it. But I, that, he's so much a classic, I remember him. Yeah. So if we didn't read your name, don't worry. We'll catch up next we'll week. We, just, we had a technical difficulty. Uh, Chrissy D, will you marry me? Patty, I can't catch AIDS twice, Conway. Then we got Tommy, a German kid with an Irish name in a Mexican situation. Call me California Chrissy D. Ryan. Put him on the list for the creativity. Then we got Jacob Yell. Arek shoots enough glue to fill a shoe or two. Para. Then we got Chrissy and Yanni for Prezi 2020 with all the votes from the Eastern Hemis. Line of 14. Um, then we got Happy Birthday Chopped Cheese. Love Baby Bubbles. Uh, then we got Aaron Hunter. Then we got Mayor of Browntown with an addiction to Clarity and tucking it back for Lieutenant Lemon Drops. Uh, David, my father might have father billed me. Now I do open my comedy Wallansky. Check out my YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Drexler, strong Drexler. Then we got Christy D and Yanni P wrestled me covered in Chobani. Uh, then we got Detective Richard Thickens, a.k.a. Dickie Dumbcumster. Uh, then we got Chuck, I'm here to see the dandelion puppy and puffy nipple poppy crack each other open resigino. <laughs> Then we got Brett, Drex. Brett, the FCF, definitely our top pick for pseudo penis of the year, regardless of what we say after this. No take backs. Uh, yeah. Fun one, fun, fun one. Then we got, make no mistake, I'm paying with my stimulus check. Hashtag Trump 2020. <laughs> Give him a director just because the kid's taking a little food out of his own mouth to yeah. be here. Then we got Charles 3005, Dylan Ballantine. Then we got Josh pushing poo, makes me shoot glue. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> Drexler. Then we got uh, Asher. I'm a Juden kid in Chrissy concentration camps. Makes me nervous sometimes. Rappaport, we don't condone that. No, but I mean, he's a Jewish kid. It's a funny thing. He's getting a Drexler for that. Yeah. Then we got Andrew Compizzi. Uh Then we got Jerk Off to Your Own Asshole from Behind, Knuckle Up, Donahue. Uh, okay. Then okay. we got Sheffrey. Then we got Chrissy D's PP in a Lulu Lemon TP while attending RuPaul's Speakeasy. You know yeah. where he goes... Roll out the catapult and fucking fling him onto the list. Okay. Then we, I'll just do these five more. I'll end at 135, V, okay? Then we got Sean Rod, Tyler Buttle, the Fantasy King. Frank Thomas has low tea and beans. Um, then we got uh, Kaylin Atticus, Atkinson. And then if, last but not least, you think what we got, if you don't think every December 7th, I put Panda Express in the microwave for five minutes for the boys, you got another thing coming. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It, sometimes, I mean, because we just keep having these dark horses, right? That last one. That was one, the last one. The too. last one, too. He goes on the list, and he's given a, a run for the money. So it's between the last one and, and, uh, and the first one favorite. What was the first one again? Was it? Nikki No Dick to the East to help boost the trans fans. Can't be He beat. wins. You're the winner, Nikki No Dick. Yeah, I, I, it's so good. I want. I might make a T-shirt for him and sell it back to him. Yeah, Nikki No Dick, which you will get 50% of the proceeds because make no mistake, you're using our platform. Yeah, I thank you for boosting our trans fans. Yeah, all right, so there you have it. By cutting off your own dick. Love you guys so much. Hope you have a nice week. <laughs> we really hope you enjoyed that episode, whatever it was about. This is just a stock thing that we're taping on to every episode. So... Go, make sure you rate, review us, subscribe, uh, turn on your notifications, get jiggy with it. And go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys where things get really wild. Wow.